Welcome to round five of Lone Star Drift YouTube. I'm Aaron, and you are? I'm Alexi from Noriero on YouTube. And we're standing in front of the only three Corollas that have ever come to a Lone Star Drift event. <laughs> it's a sea of 350Zs everywhere. I want to walk around, you say a few words about the cars, but first of all, have sure. you ever seen this many 350Zs at a drift event ever in your life? Okay, I, went, I came to this event in 2019, yeah. and there weren't as many. Yeah. And we just rolled in, and it's just Z, 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 the whole pit. Yeah. It's pretty it's weird, isn't it? it? It's kind of weird, yeah. And you know what's weird is, it's not that there was more 350Zs in the other cars, it's that all the other cars died, and yeah. these are like the roaches of the apocalypse that yeah. you cannot kill. Yeah. All right, so first of all, these are also the roaches of the apocalypse you cannot kill. The AE86, run us through the differences between like American A86s versus the Japanese ones. Cause you see all this stuff all the time in Japan. Yeah. Just let's look at them and say something. Generally, uh, 86 purists will only run a 4 AGE. That's it. They won't run a beams engine, they won't run anything else. Whereas over here, just because of the size of the tracks, People tend to be like, no, I'm getting left behind, or you know, uh, most cars are running, seem to be running Toyota Beams engines over here, which is the 3S uh, two liter. So that's a big difference, I think. Like purists here don't see it is, it is a bad thing to run, you know, a different engine. Whereas in Japan, if it's 4AG or nothing. Really? Yeah. And do those cars keep up with the fast cars, or they just only drive with their friends in slow cars? No, they only they just drive with their friends. Like I remember, I was when I first moved to Japan, I was thinking like, oh, what what car should I buy? And one of my friends said, if you want to be like good and fast, get like a Silvia. If you want to make friends, buy an A86. Oh. Because you'll all drive together. SR20, do you see many swaps like this, or just you no, don't see any at all? These days, no one would put an SR20 in A86 anymore. Because hmm. they say like, well, if you're going to run an SR20, just get a Silvia. Like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And how about like, do they do core supports like this at a bar? I mean, these days, if it's gonna be a track only car, you know, if it's been crashed and they can salvage it, yeah, but uh, I think this, this sort of, people try and keep them as, as pure as possible over there because other 86, 86, 86 people are very judgmental. Mm -hmm. So they'll look at it and go like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're very judgmental. I was talking to some A86 people over there and I was talking to them like, you're driving $30,000 cars, this and that. Yeah. And I was like, will you drive something else? And like, they're like, no, I drove this because it was $300 20 years ago and I'm too cheap to do anything else. Yeah. And the car just happens to be worth something now, but I'm still like broke and I still drive like a cheap car. Yeah. So are those drifted by collectors, like people that bought them for a lot of money or they're just drifted by like cheap people, you know what I mean? They're, they're drifted by people who used to buy them for $300 yeah. and they just don't want to stop doing it. Okay. Yeah. So once they kill those, they're done unless they have a bunch of shells in their backyard. Well, that's the thing. A lot of them sort of do have, you know, there's yards with like stuff. You know, people have, people have collections of parts mm -hmm. and they kind of share it with each other. Like if someone's like, oh, I need a drive shaft, they go, oh, I got one. And mm -hmm. oh, I need this, oh, like, yeah, they kind of share parts. Hmm. And is this like, are the bodies and the styling typical the same thing? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty I mean, much. He's running the Mark IIs, you know, like, and the, you know, the, it, it's very similar. Like this, this one here would not look out of place over there for sure. How about the Mustangs? You I mean, obviously don't see many of them. Yeah. Do like Japanese people think these are cool? What do they think about like a missile Mustang okay. like this? Okay, so the same type of people who think JDM cars here are cool over there, it's like the same type of people. Like mm. it's a smaller amount, but they really like it. You so know? what do you call a weeb that's Japanese that likes American stuff? I don't know. Oh, they don't have a name? Uh, a Maribu? I don't know. A Maribu? <laughs> <laughs> so the guys that like Japanese stuff here, that's a style thing and like their weebs or they like anime, they like all yeah. that kind of stuff. So this would just be someone that likes like Americana stuff. Yeah, It wouldn't yeah. be interesting from just like a drifter who just likes drift cars. Yeah. They would be just into Sylvia's and Yeah, stuff. well they, if, if someone over in Japan would be into Mustangs, they'd sort of, you'd be guaranteed the rest of their life would have some sort of like Ameri American like slant to it, like, okay. know, yeah. That makes sense. And do, um, does anybody drive these things over there at local events at all? I've seen like three. But they have yeah. much more lax importation laws into Japan where we have super strict ones and you still see a lot of JZXs and stuff here. Why don't more people import odd stuff like that? Good question. I don't know. It, maybe it's, it's easier to be into stuff which, I mean, I don't know. I guess because there's not really a culture of it. Yeah. Like, you know, if someone in Japan would be buying a Mustang to drift, they're kind of imitating America, imitating, yeah. you know, Japan, in a sense. Whereas... Oh, stand in the shade real quick and keep going so we okay. don't overheat you. Okay, okay. 
if it's the culture that's in the country already, mm -hmm. like, because, you know, Japanese car culture, it's very, like, it's had a long history. It's quite packaged. You know, you can build, like, a JDM car quite easily. But, uh -huh. like, you know, this, I don't know, it's it, it's like an extra step. So you'd have to be, like, way more dedicated to it to want to yeah. buy something like this, I think. Yeah. This rolls into my same thing. I saw recently, uh, like, an Instagram clip of the inside of a guy's car, and he looks like, I don't think he's smoking, but he's, like, sitting there looking cool, and he's, like, Japan drifting used to be with Japanese parts. Yeah, and that like, guy. Yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, that guy on Instagram. Yeah, don't worry about that guy. He's okay, not, so Japanese people don't care about all their not, parts that, being American. That guy's just that guy's a bit of a weirdo, I think. Like he's just doing, <laughs> he's just kind <laughs> of him under the bus on the video. Well, <laughs> he's all the stuff he does in his videos. He's a bit more of a you know you Instagrammy clout uh, guy. Like most people don't really care. Like okay, so people don't care that do the it. Japanese are bringing in American parts now, and most like. Formula D or D1 level cars now have parts from other countries. They all, all, all professional drift cars have parts from all over the world. You know, yeah. like Europe, America, Japan. But everywhere. 20 years ago, all the parts were from Japan. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, mo motor, it's a, it's a motorsport. It's evolved. I mean, every motorsport is using, you know, electronics and mechanical parts. I mean, look, yeah. I think, you know, America is known for making, uh, Europe is more about suspension. Yeah, that's the image. It's like European is like suspension is much better. America is more about like, you know, engine parts and like strong parts. Yeah. I guess is what America is known for. So it's, yeah, it's a combination of everything. Makes sense. So for the audience that's watching, we only have a few Mustangs here, maybe like four or five out of, you know, 70 or 90 cars or something like that. The Mustangs are not that prevalent, but it's something you don't see in a lot of other places. So I just kind of brought this up. What you do see here a lot of is let's go find a Z. Come on.
like six of them. So this is like a, for the audience, this is like a quintessential Texas car. This car has done like three or four drift weeks. It has very bare bone basic parts on it, which is dual caliper setup, a stock engine, maybe air filters and exhaust, little things like that. And it's not like the most exciting thing in the world to drive, but yeah. you literally jumped in it with zero explanation. You turn the key and you've done at least 75 laps. More than that. More. He's done 100 laps. 100 and like, laps. you wouldn't be jumping in a Corolla doing that here, or like an SR car, or something in Texas. It wouldn't last that long, no. No. So. so these things are like the roaches of the apocalypse. They're so durable. What do you think about them? Because it's probably not something you see a lot in Japan. So, no, <laughs> not really. Uh, like personally, mm -hmm. this is like the like sort of the opposite of what I like. <laughs> you know, like I like turbo straight six. You know, I don't. I mean, just for a regular like practice car with a wise fab. You know, I don't really like that. But for the purpose of giving you know, passenger rides, which is what I've been doing all day yesterday and today so far, it's it's just consistent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't overheat. Um, I just pull off, go into the the tire cool down. You know, water over there. Yeah. And the tires last. It's great. It's perfect for, for here. This is perfect. You're like, I don't like it, but it's perfect. Yeah. That's the funny thing but, about these. But, it, but it's the thing about drift cars. It's like, it, you know, they're all too, you know, if you just want something that's like, like the Corolla guys, where it's like, I like this, and this is mm -hmm. what I like, and I want to do this, and I don't care if it's not the best, I like this. This is like the opposite of that. It's like, this is what you need to, to drive here. Super fast sponsor plug, BC Racing Custom Coilovers, NK Wheels, Grip Royal, KBD Body Parts, Heatway Visual, Spec Clutch, Vaptasia, Valino Tires, WhatMonstersDo.com, their old logo on top, their newer one on the bottom. Thank you all you guys. Fastest ad read ever, let's go. They're, they're good cars, but let's go find one that's a little bit more stylish and built up. This one's very basic, yeah. but it works really well. How do you like the Wise Fab, by the way? Um, I mean, it'd be better with more power, mm -hmm. obviously, but I just like the fact that, you know, if I wanna, if I wanna drive just sort of that medium angle fast, you can do that. If you wanna just like, you know, pull the handbrake and do that and just go like that. Yeah. And make the spectator, make the, the passengers go, yeah, like yeah. you can do that too. So, and if you're about to spin it, you go, oh, okay. And go that way. Like, it yeah. throws like an extra flavor into the car, which is interesting. Not to say everything in Texas is a 350Z, but we do have this. It's like an HGK body kit, carbon Kevlar, supercharged, I think M50 E36, which is a very unique car. So it should be very light, hopefully. It does have a sunroof though. Oh, but it's a lightweight sunroof, probably just a skin. Um, but this is a pretty like full-on competition car. Do you see any? And then we also have somebody that's a FD RX7 drifter, but he brings a 350Z to the events because he wants to drive a lot. That one broke. Yeah, so he brings two, but like this one's normally pretty reliable. But it's it's a tough call to bring a rotary to an event in Texas, especially when it's 100 degrees. So that's like a super reliable thing. So it's kind of a mix of interesting cars here. Do you have many cars like this? No. Like. None? I mean, unless you're gonna see me like D, like D1 or something like that, then no. So you wouldn't see this at like a local event? Some no. dude wouldn't rock up in a carbon Kevlar car? Unless he like just built it and he was doing a shakedown for a competition coming up. Like, yeah. yeah. No, not right. really, no. It's a completely caged, probably like 350, 400 wheel, I'm guessing something like that. Nothing too crazy. No AC, interesting. All right, let's go ask this guy super fast. Real quick, I'm gonna interrupt. In 10 seconds, what happened to the RX-7 today? <laughs> I blew the coolant, so. Oh, so it broke. Uh, it's been, it's been broke. Okay. But you got to continue driving because you brought a 350Z as well, right? Yes. Okay. So oh, gosh, no. That's the story. <laughs> that's the whole story. The RX-7 guy broke, but he's prepared Three because he brings down, an extra car. Years. This, for you guys that are uninitiated, is a DE 350Z. It has significantly less power than the one Alexi's driving. It's just an earlier motor version. Kind of, whatever. Let's keep Alexi talking though. What do you want to talk about, Alexi? What's uh, your favorite car here? My favorite, oh, good question. Um, I don't know. We have some stylish cars down here. I don't know, I've been so I've been so concentrated on doing passenger rides, I haven't really, I haven't really walked down here yet or not. How about this, is this cool looking to you? I think this is super cool. It's this clean street car, cool wheels. It's not my style. It's not your style, but it's man. His, but it's his style. He's that, throwing shade. But it's his style and that's what matters. Okay. Yeah. Let's find something you do like. How about that little MR2 first gen? Uh, that's actually drifting. I, I I did see that drifting before. That was very impressive. Mm-hmm. I mean. He's going to skip over that one. That's okay. Let's keep going. Well, there was a JZX here before, but he went home, so. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's one of it. I like that. So you like OEM looking Japanese cars? Well, I mean, it's got the TRD on it, so it looks pretty cool. Okay. I mean, if I, had to, if I had to pick like, you know, an American car that I thought was cool, maybe like one of the Mustangs, 
Oh, you actually like the Mustangs I more like, than the I like Zs? I the way it looks, yeah. These, like, these body styles or no? Uh, this one. This one? This is my favorite. Okay, what makes it your favorite? It's got a bit of, like, I guess, like, this, you know, saline. It's like a bit, like, it's a hot model. I don't know if it's the actual, if it's just a bumper or not. Yeah. But it's got, it's got that sort of American look, but a bit of that sort of retro, you know, 90s sort of, you know, look to it. Okay. Sort of thing. So it's, I think to, it's to unique me, and it's stylish. I like to it. To me, this is like a very sort of American looking car. Yeah. Good. I like this 180SX. So this, this You like this? Yeah. It's a 180SX, yeah. This is an SR20 car and stuff. I like the I like the late model brake lights. I like the body kit. I'm a big fan of uh, CR Kai wheels too. I wonder if they're real. They're the CR lies? Knockoffs. They might be knockoffs. They are fake? Okay. So how is this different than like a Japanese car? It's very similar to one. It's very similar? Yeah. This would this would look completely like in the pit. If you saw this in the pits of Nikko, it'd be like completely normal. These are very fun to drive. Are they using many Garrett turbos and stuff over there, like newer Garrett turbos? Um, or are they still more, on? More and more. Like more as, and more. Yeah, because as, as, as people who have older turbos are starting to break, they're starting to use more of these sorts of things, yeah. Okay. And why do you like it more than that car in particular? Swing oh, to that. I don't know. Just a bit more street looking. More well, street looking? Yeah. This is? Yeah. Because that one has vinyl on it or what? Yeah. I mean, also he's got the, yeah, I think it's cool he's got like the, Grenade style wheels, like the R34 style wheels, so that's kind of cool. That's they're, they're pretty close though, but I like okay. this one more. I like 180s. How about the 180s with like the Rocket Bunny style like bumper that swoops in instead of bell bottoms out? Because that's kind of a is that an American or Japanese style? No, I'm mean, obviously it's a Japanese kit, but I, but it's replicating a NASCAR type thing. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's, it's Japanese it's, replicating America with an American, then re-replicating that look. So that. it's back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Is that good or? It's, if they like it, I'm not a fan of oh, it. Oh, okay, you're not a fan. How about the full-on comp car like that with all the livery and... Depends how, how well he does in competition. Ooh, you're gonna throw him under the if bus. He does I'm gonna well, beat him. If he does well, it's cool. If he does, if he does badly, it's not cool. So you're saying it's not cool then unless it's driven super well. He was telling me to like, sort of subconsciously make you think you're gonna lose, like, the other night. When oh, really? He, when he's shocked, he's like, make, make Aaron think he's gonna lose to me, right? Like. No, we're both pretty confident we're both gonna win. <laughs> we're gonna tie. Ooh. Um, all right, I guess the last car that we're going to look at, let's go judge this the thing. IS? Yeah. <coughs> so I can plaster that over and that one. <coughs> um, all right, so how is this compared to like a Japanese car? Because it's obviously imitating the Japanese style super yeah, hard. You would, you would see this sort of thing in Japan, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, this sort of style these days is driven by young guys. Oh, sort why? of like you know, in their twenties. I don't know. I guess this is the sort of style that younger guys like. You know, those. You mean the IS three hundred or the BN wide body just, red? Yeah, everything in general, like because you know these cars are a bit cheaper these days, so younger guys can afford them a bit better. Mm. And you know, low with the BN kit and the flashy wheels and stuff. Like all the um, you know, you've seen the events called Dori Dore, mm -hmm. like the drift dress up, like mm -hmm. cars that they have to look good and uh, drift as well, like mm -hmm. those sorts of things. And they're all young guys, so in their twenties. Mm. Yeah. So this is you would see this sort of thing over there. And. For um, sure. Would they be driving with a beams motor, like the stock four cylinder, or would they have Jay-Z swaps, or? Because uh, in America, they come with a naturally yeah. aspirated Jay-Z. I mean, you can tell when they have the beams, because they always have a straight pipe. You, know, you, hear, <laughs> ma, you can always hear them a mile away, yeah. yeah. Well, the guys who drift them, obviously, you want to get the Jay-Z, because the Jay -Z, cause it's uh, you know, just easier power. Yeah. Yeah. But the guys who are like not actually drifting it, they always get the, the four cylinder with a straight pipe. You can hear it. And is it common for guys to swap engines like that in like these type of cars or no? No, no because I mean, because you can just buy a JZX over there. Yeah, I mean you can just the options are much wider, so you can kind of yeah get what you want. Okay. Stock cars. And this car is this kind of quintessential Japanese looking, or is it? This if if you said to me where does this come from, I'd say it would come from like Kansai, like a like Meihan. You just you know, made him so happy. Oh really? <laughs> no, this is a real car. I mean, obviously it's got your know, origin. It's a real Kansai style car. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them these days run the solid wheels because they do tend to break them a lot. So this is kind of like the full on missile G35 thing. Do y'all have anyone that missile car G35s, which is a Skyline in A Japan? little bit, a little bit, A yeah. little bit, so it's just, getting to be more normal? It's sort of, but they're still considered to be like the ultra budget, like I'm completely broke mm -hmm. car. 
But I remember there was a, um, the editor of Drifter Noku, mm -hmm. uh, there was like a little video that he was sort of talking about this sort of stuff. And he said that like people who drive the you know, fair ladies or Zs, they're a bit more like they buy regular parts and you know, they, they take a bit more care about it. But the guys who drive these are all like, you know, Yahoo auction parts, free, second hand tires, cheap, cheap, cheap. Like, yeah, it's got that yep, image. Like that. Yeah. Overseas, like in Australia, New Zealand, like the uh, like R32, R33 Skylines with like an RB20 mm -hmm. had a really bad image, mm -hmm. especially the NA ones, because it was like they, the engines lasted forever. So it was always like shitheads who'd buy them uh -huh. and just beat the shit out of them and they wouldn't die, so mm -hmm. they lasted forever. Do they yeah. still have them there, or did they like just trash them all? They've been pretty trashed, yeah. Pretty it's trashed. Been, been a bit harder to find now, yeah. I'm kind of curious how long it took, because like we have these, G like this. Yeah. Like this could last another five, 10 years, or you know, they could just like junk it at the junkyard at some point. It depends how expensive the replacements are. Yeah. Because just like Corollas, people were junking those forever. And then when they shot up in value, People are like, oh God, now like we have to keep them, and then yeah. they no longer die whatsoever. They only stay alive, and people bring them back. I mean, to I, life. I think I think that's that whole thing's been accelerated now by the fact that you know even like here, like getting if you wanted to buy like an R34 Skyline, it's like getting yeah. like that. So ever even people have these sorts of cars. <laughs> like, ah, uh, yeah, I was aspirational before. <laughs> Maybe I'd better just hang on to this for now. And yeah. What do the Japanese people think about the cars, like the 34s and stuff, shooting up to like? Because a four-door R34 used to be, literally be a thousand dollars, yeah. And now they're selling them here for like a like nice one for twenty to fifty. I don't know. Oh well, yeah, a lot of them are like, oh yeah, thanks America, pretty, pretty much. Really? Yeah. So they're not mad or anything that those cars are now irreplaceable. They're happy they get to like offload them. I, I think. I mean, like you see on Twitter and stuff like that, which is where Japanese people really speak their mind. I mean, they're, they're upset that like cars get stolen a lot more mm -hmm. as a result of them being more like, you know, wanted overseas. Mm -hmm. So the that aspect of it, like the fact that they can't just park their Supra in a car park and just lock it and that's it. Like they have to like, oh, so track it. Oh, so stolen there? I, I didn't yeah. think anything got stolen. Oh yeah, a lot more now. Oh. A lot, yeah, recently. Like there's this uh, one guy who has a, uh, a drag racing shop. His, he parked his R32 drag car in a, like a coin parking. Uh -huh. The night before, he had the the, uh, the drag tree was uh -huh. in the passenger seat. The car got stolen. That's crazy. Yeah, um, Kuni, you know uh, Kuniaki, the D1 Grand Prix driver. Mm -hmm. He went up to Hokkaido for an event, and, he, and this uh, he had a red uh, J6100. Got stolen from the car park. Are those Japanese people stealing the cars, or someone else? I, I don't want to make any sort of comments. But foreigners, about that, you can just but, say foreigners. Well, I mean a bit of both. Okay. Oh, I mean, you, so Japanese people steal too? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think that was really in their nature. No like maybe business crime, but not like physical crime, you know what I mean? You feel so safe there. There's a, yeah, I mean, there's still plenty of theft. Oh, there's okay. not like, you know, I mean. I've never even like seen a bike lock there. No, everyone locks their bike. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's only a small one. Oh. But there's still, every, every bike has a bike lock. Whenever like I'm in Nihon Matsu or anything, all the bikes are always just like sitting there everywhere. I guess in Tokyo maybe they're locking more. Yeah. I mean, you know, you get some, like some drunk businessman who missed his last train. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll just ride home. Uh, oh. They'll just, just steal a bike. So it's drunk businessman crime. Yeah, a lot of that, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for showing us around and stuff. Okay. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, what do you rate that car? This is probably the coolest Z here today. I Whoa, think. really? Yeah, I like the color. All right, scale of one to 10. Uh, 7.8. 7.8. Is it cooler than that Valvoline one? Yes. Really? Why? Because it's got the flashy green, like toxic green paint. Okay, cool. Oh, that's my preference. What's the it? highest grade of any car here? Scale of 1 to 10. I mean, it's a drift event, so... Oof. Oof. Uh, Throwing what? people under the bus. No, not that, but like, I don't know, who could... Uh, of people who are actually driving? Yeah. That, there's that V8 180SX over there. It's pretty nice. Oh, the red one, Mike's, yeah. Mike Noriega. Yeah, yeah that, that thing one. rips. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. He takes, uh, we'll put a picture of that on their side. That's a beautiful car. I'll give it like a eight and a half. Eight and a half? That's pretty good. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Boom. No, 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 go away, go away. All right, this is my nemesis. Oh wait, he's got a compression, compression gauge out. What's going on? Where's Rudy? What's, there he is. Let's go bug him. So this is my competition. He's currently leading points. This is the man of the hour, the man to beat. How's the car doing? Great. Good. So you're going to win? Yes. 
I look forward to it. I'm gonna have a good battle. Are you excited? I am. Awesome. And I saw your guys over there with the hood open. What's going on? Uh, we got a little piece of metal, yeah. but we took it out. Why? Where was it no, in the we engine? we picked it up in the track. Oh, man. Yeah. Did it get past your air filter? Yeah. Yeah? Did you have a good air filter on there? Nope. Nope. Did what? you have any air filter on there? Nope. Did you learn your lesson? Nope. What was the metal? I have no idea. Did it hurt the motor? Uh, I think it will be all right. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Rudy is the most fun person to drive with out here right now. I had some really good laps with him yesterday. Uh, so I'm excited. This is going to be a hell of a battle. I don't want him to go out because his engine's harmed, but I also want to beat him. So we're going to see. Did he get on 285s? No, he's still on the 265s. Can you not afford those extra 20 millimeters? What's going on? I don't like my working on my car. So your car would need to be worked on more if you had 285s? Yeah, because I'll break axles. Because oh. I'm much faster than you. Oh, are you? Yeah. We're going to see today. Yeah, I can only left foot brake for so long. So. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That must be tough. Yeah. I like how he handicapped himself with two last cylinders. Yeah. It's going to be a good battle. I got to do what I got to do to like stay behind you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of footwork. This is a lot of big talk. You think he can back it up? Yeah, I mean, I'm leading in points. That is true. That is true. He's currently winning. Yep. He thinks he's going to Japan. I'm going to declare bankruptcy to get out of this. <laughs> Hello everybody, let's do narration of this competition. Pro-Am is basically an unlimited class that it just has safety rules and a 285-3518 treadwear cap. This is the track map. It's about a 65 mile an hour entry, I'm guessing, even though I drive this all the time. Goes into a sweeper with a chicane. Nice equalizer of a track. Slow cars can kind of keep up by jumping the start on this track. It's a great track for competition. It allows 350Zs to compete against you know V8 cars and stuff. Let's get started. Now, first of all, this is a competition, so we have some rules. The lead car has to put down a great lap. You can go back to that track map and kind of see the line that the cars are supposed to take, but the lead car is supposed to take a great line and make sure that the, fo the follow car can have a great follow lap. If the lead car does not put down a great lap on a good line, the follow car cannot be expected to put down a great lap. So it's really important that the lead car puts that down. Then angle, a little bit of style, all those things are taken into account, but it's very important that he puts down a good solid lead lap that has great line, great angle, all these things. Um, he has marks to make that the judges tell them where to go. Now the follow car, he needs to be close. He needs to be on a good line following the lead driver, but he can only put down you know, the line that the lead driver can um, lead him on. He needs to have good angle, he needs to be close to him, and then he needs to have great timing for transitions and just show a bunch of skill in his chase. So that's kind of how all this works. Uh, this right now is Craig Elmer from out of state against Kevin Susie, the owner of Turn 5 Fabrication in Texas. Kevin just got a 1JZ in that car because his SR blew up so many times. And Craig has a HGK carbon Kevlar body kit, which uh, also has a supercharger on a inline six BMW motor. So here is Devin also out of state versus Mike Noriega with an LS3 S13. Devin has a little four cylinder that is not super powerful in that Corolla, but it is an awesome little car. And you can see that these guys at this point are in the back of the pack, but it doesn't mean they're bad drivers, just means that they're lower in points and they get more tandem experience because of the way that we bracket the drivers. The first qualifier doesn't go against 32nd and knock them out immediately. The guys at the back of the pack all go against each other. Um, that way they get more tandem experience against people of their own skill level. And basically it's a great way to make sure everybody gets to drive a lot so that the guy that wins doesn't just annihilate everybody and take all the laps of the competition. All right, I'm gonna narrate this as we go. Let's get over with this lap so I can try and get pumped up and tell you guys what's going on in, a, in an announcer of a competition style. And if you look at the top of the battle screen, it's gonna have the lead driver's name, which is Craig Elmer in this lap against Arturis Crastens. I hope I don't mess anybody's name up. Nice lead lap by uh, entry by Craig there. On the outside, nice line, really outside, big angle in that car. Transitions a little bit later on that cone, but that's okay. Arturis is playing catch up. He has less angle and he's not quite as solid throughout the track. Craig is putting down a fantastic lap for him to follow. Craig's a bit on the inside there. He consistently has less angle as well. 
Oh, Craig drops a tire, but that's not the end of the world. Drops one more tire, just slight deductions there. Now they swap positions. The follow driver is now the lead driver, and the lead driver is now the follow driver. Nice entry, you can see less of a faint flick. A little bit more of a moderate entry by the S13. Craig is pretty far behind. He dips a tire there on the inside and has very moderate angle there. Lead driver is now making a much better showing throughout the course right there. Nice lap. Good angle, good smoke from the front car. Smoke's not important, but it shows a lot of throttle commitment and everything. Nice lap there. Good, good job, both drivers. All right, here's Alex versus James Kurz. Front car is a DE350Z, which means it's probably about 300 crank horsepower. And James Kurz in the back has an S54, which is the E46 M3 motor, and a 325i that he got crazy cheap from his brother and then put way too much money in it. Now, that S54 drivetrain E36 is a weapon of a car, and James is an excellent driver. Both of these guys are excellent drivers. Alex is a sim driver with an unlimited amount of seat time in a sim. Very low angle right there, but makes it through really nicely and very smoothly. Let's swap these guys and see what happens. Oh, nice big faint injury by James. That looks really good. Alex is struggling a little bit there. Not as consistent through his angle. James almost goes off track. That was really aggressive. Nice transitions. James in the lead car is just throwing it from edge of the track to edge of the track. I absolutely love it. Now, it's hard to drive a DE350Z. He's cutting the track right there in the orange car. It's hard to drive a DE350Z because they're so low in power against all these Pro-Am cars. It can be very difficult. And even James's S54 car, while it's completely capable of winning, you'll see it get pulled by some of the faster cars here. Now, this is Kevin Wynn in the lead in his 350Z. He had a very weak entry right there on the very end side. Kevin's following him here. Let's see what happens. Now, Kevin is an absolute weapon on this track and pretty much anywhere he goes. Kevin is extremely experienced. That's basically a stock car with suspension in the lead versus a SWAT JZ uh, bigger turbo um, 240SX, which has way more horsepower, probably 30, 40% more horsepower and probably 500 pounds less weight on him. Nice lap there. Now, Kevin is a beast of a follow driver. He's pretty close there. That is really close. Kevin's having a lot of problems following though for some reason. He can't keep his car in angle there. I'm not sure if he's using, like uh, sometimes you'll see the drivers have very low angle to maintain close proximity. He's doing fantastic there, especially that transition. He was only a few feet behind him. Great transaction timing from the 350Z right there. He is on Kevin's door. Actually, he gets so close, he messes up transitions too early, and now he's gonna have a problem in the follow position, making it all the way down to that next corner. You can see he's strained out right there. It was kind of a mess. All right, jumping to the next battle, Michael Debecki versus J.R. Koenig. This is a stock, basically, 300ZX, which no one drives. He's an excellent driver in that thing versus a very prepped SR20 car. Now, JR in that SR20 car, the car's not super responsive. He's going to have a difficult time chasing a slower car, which is Michael. And Michael throws off a lot of drivers, even though he's a very good driver. That car is a bit slow throughout the track, and he has to hustle that thing around. So a small displacement 2-liter turbo car can have a difficult time following a slower car in front of them. That car really wants to go its own pace, whereas a V8 car would have an easier time doing that. All right, you can see JR just rocking it ahead of Michael here. Nice entry. Big angle, all the way off track almost. Too much angle there. That was kind of a deduction probably. It looks like he put at least one tire off, but that was a rad looking sweeper part right there for JR. And that car just looks so good going around the track. I absolutely love that car, it's beautiful. We rib him a lot of the time too because of his little SR20, because there's almost no one left driving SR20s, but JR is like a master mechanic at a BMW dealership, knows how to keep a car together. He's doing a great job. All right, here's AJ Patel in another SR20 car, very few SR20 cars, followed by Brian McKay, who has a big problem on his entry, strains up, understeer. I don't think his power steering is working. He's had mechanical difficulty here. AJ is kind of cleaning up on him here. AJ is very consistent driver with a really reliable SR20 car that always functions. He's killing it right now. Brian has a bunch of compounding errors. Very late transition right there. Bunch of understeer. Huge advantage to AJ in my eyes, although I am not judging. All right, AJ kind of jumps Brian to try and catch up. Brian's car is so much faster down the straight. 
Weird some suspension bobbles going over that little bump. Nice consistent angle through there. A little bit late on his transition, but that's okay. Too far on the inside there. His line was a bit messed up for the SC300, the blue car. Uh, his line's a little bit of a mess all over the place. I'm assuming that's because of his power steering again. AJ's catching him through here. AJ's a bit slow on that transition. Completely strains up right there. That's a little bit of a mess. And we come to the end of that lap. We'll find out who wins that in just a minute. Now it's Max Wagner and his Mustang. He has multiple Mustangs. All of them are at least that beat up versus Craig Elmer. That's a super lightweight BMW versus a very heavy uh, Mustang. Craig's very late on his transition there across the cone. You can see each of his transitions is a little bit late and then the E36 gets pulled to the next corner. If Craig would speed up his transition timing and transition at the exact same time as the Mustang, that wouldn't happen. But I assume his car is quite a bit faster than the Mustang and can probably be a little bit hard to hold back there. Nice lap by both cars. Let's see how much faster that BMW is. It's a decent amount faster, but Max Wagner jumped him pretty well down the straight. Max is really good in these missile car Mustangs he has. You can see Max, even though he's falling behind, the transition time is very similar, which means he's kind of catching up instead of falling back each time he has a transition. Really aggressive by Max. I really like his transition timing there. That's excellent. Ooh, nice. Max is doing a fantastic job. Good job, Max. I really like that lap. All right, here we go. James Kurz in that S54 BMW jumps the heck out of Kenny Roskin. Kenny does a nice big entry. This is like a 600 horsepower 2JZ on Wisefab. James is doing everything he can to follow him. You'll see the follow car often go to small angle, which he's doing right now. Even though Kenny has huge angle, Kenny's allowing the follow car to catch up. If he dialed out some angle, James would never be able to catch him probably. Kenny is making more smoke than probably anyone in the comp this weekend. That can be a bit difficult though, because as you make more smoke and you have bigger angle, um, sometimes it's good to try and rock it off and pass, like, you know, get away from the guy instead of doing that. Kenny is stupid aggressive there. That was amazing. But then he goes to a bit more angle than the lead car. Lead car is almost one tire off track. Kenny runs out of space there holding the car back. Big angle though again. Woo! Kenny's line's getting a bit messed up. James has killed it. James drops a tire there. He could have bent his suspension control arm there. There is a dip right there on the outside of the track. I cannot even see what's going on there. There's so much smoke. Kenny has an, a crazy car. Kenny was a little bit slow in that transition as well, letting him get away. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I think that's a big advantage to James, though. James did amazing. Ooh, this is Aaron. And that's me, by the way, in the lead. Oh, my God. My car is so much faster than that Mustang. I apologize about that, man. I roasted you off the line. Now you can't even zoom the camera out enough to see both cars. My car is a pretty fast car. It only makes about 400 wheel in that V8 car, but it's a really healthy 400 wheel. It's an LQ9, six liter LS motor with a cam and head work. Only makes about 410 wheel. Should make like 450, we're told, but it doesn't, but it's a very healthy motor. And now it's more borrowed car action. Rudy Martinez leading Edwin Jennings. Edwin's been having some mechanical difficulty of his car going to limp mode in this event, but Diego's car, which is the one, the green 350Z that Rudy's borrowing, is an absolute monster. Rudy's also a monster of a driver. He's currently leading the Pro-Am section of the event, although that was a little bit of a mess right there for the lead car. Um, that car is a healthy 300, probably 15, 20 wheel out of that little 350Z. It is one of the healthiest motors out of all the 350Zs at our events. Edwin has a V8 Mustang, although it is very heavy. He's doing a great job. It was a good lap by both drivers. Now Edwin is going to lead in that uh, Mustang. Let's see here. It is a Coyote Mustang as well, which is a fantastic engine. Nice handbrake entry by Edwin. Nice line, shallow angle by Edwin. Rudy is a monster of a driver though. Rudy's giving him a consistent amount of space there. He's not sucking up on him, though. Oh, and Edwin goes into limp mode. I believe his car was having limp mode problems. He probably told Rudy that and told him to hang back. Here we have Max Wagner in a now bent control arm Mustang, which is super dangerous on track, versus AJ Patel. You can see, oh my God, huge understeer, control arm problem. And AJ passes him, which is not even allowed, but it doesn't matter because it was 100% Max's problem. Max's car is broken. And AJ in the little SR20 car 
Just zooms along on track. Good job, AJ. That was excellent control, too. All these guys, by the way, there was a great video a long time ago on the Drift Games channel called Hero for a Weekend. All these guys are absolute heroes for the weekend. They're driving cars and putting them on the line every lap, testing their metal against the other drive. Oh man, Max, I feel bad for him. His alignment is super messed up, but he is a great driver. All these guys are testing their skills, their cars, putting it all on the line for these weekends. We're all completely addicted to driving. I absolutely love it. I look forward to it more than, I don't want to say everything in life because I have a daughter and a wife, but I really like driving. All these guys do. Ooh, this is James Kurz and that S54 car absolutely just raping JR down the line and that SR20 car. JR actually gets smoked and goes off track right there. James is a beast of a driver and even though that car probably weighs 500 pounds more than that S13, he is hustling it through the track. Good job, James. And JR. Man, JR is getting phased though. Gonna be fun to see them turn this around. All right, let's see what happens. James jumps him, JR in that little two liter car is having trouble getting off the line. Then as soon as he hits second gear and gets past 5,000 RPM, the car rockets off. JR is on a nice line through there. He was a little bit narrow at first, but really nice. Gets around that inner clipping point. James just rockets up on his door though. Oh man, James is so good. Nice, aggressive transition there. He is in the pocket now. JR almost goes off track. Nice wide line. Let's JR suck up on his, or James suck up on his door. Woo, they're both named James, by the way. But we're calling the S13 JR, because he also goes by that. Great lap by both drivers, but I'm going to have to say JR takes that. Whoa, my car's fast again. Mike Noriega gets smoked off the line. Um... Uh, Oh, it can be tough, by the way. What probably happened with Mike Noriega right there is when you're off pace and the other car is going faster, because uh, I was driving pretty fast, so fast I almost push off right there. Uh, Mike Noriega was going a little bit faster than he was used to, puts him on a little bit different line and kind of slid off course a little bit. Um, it just kind of phases you a little bit. I've had that happen a bunch of times driving in competition events with faster cars. All right, I know I have an advantage in my S14 in the back missing the bumper. I give Mike some space, but not too much space because I know I have a heavy lead. I'm just cruising behind him. And I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe his uh, his steering shaft was touching a header a little bit. That's exactly what that looks like in my car. He had some type of power steering problem. Not sure, I give him a wave though. And I pass on by, head into the next battle. My car, by the way, is so good nowadays. Uh, since the big wreck with Grant, we put Wise Fab on the car. We keep changing the front end, and we just put a port of power and push the strut towers apart. It keeps getting better and better. All right. This little green car is killing it. He just, it's amazing. You would think an S14 with a Jay-Z would look like it has way more power and move in a more playful way. Oh my God, that was so aggressive. But this little green 350Z is so well piloted and so aggressive through here. He is murdering it. This is Pro-Am, by the way. This is not Texas Street Legal or Limited Class. This is a 350Z going against highly modified cars. Some of them have a bigger tire on the back. Ooh, nice and aggressive. 350Z sucks up on him. Only about five feet between the cars. Nice transition. He's sucking it back in. Oh, the beautiful timing of the transitions. It would be nice if the 350Z was a little bit closer, but oh, we started that transition even a little bit, a little bit sooner than the lead car there. Absolutely amazing. These guys are on fire. I absolutely love this. That is a really fun little straight section right there. Fantastic driving by both those guys. I hope that Kevin is just really enjoying that Jay-Z. Man, James Kurz jumped the heck out of me on the line. That's a big iffy thing jumping someone by so much. My car is quite a bit faster through him throughout the track. I am on a 285-35-18 Valino at about 22 PSI in the back tires. That is a lot of tire, especially when like he can't possibly spend that in that little inline six. At least I don't think he could. Um, so he's kind of bringing a knife to a gunfight here. My car is going to be faster in the unlimited class than him. Doesn't mean that that 
it doesn't give him a chance to win, but it gives me a decent advantage. You can see here I can kind of just drive on his door. And I can kind of reel him in at most times, even if my timing and stuff is a little bit off. Great proximity by the follow car, which again is me. Sounds a little silly. A little bit late on the transition there from Aaron. But he's still up on his door because the S14 is faster overall. Nice. You'll see very few cars really suck up in that pocket like that too. Good lap. Pat myself on the back. All right, now we have Rudy Martinez in the 350Z again against AJ Patel. Look at that 350Z pull that S13 with an SR down the straight. You would not think that 350Z would be so fast. It's such a good little car. That 350Z, by the way, we can't see what's inside the motors. So it is a VQ. It does have stock injectors. It has long tubes, I believe. Um, and a person could add cams or whatever they want in the inside of the motor. We can't, we can't tech that, but they cannot add a supercharger turbo nitrous. They cannot go to E85 and they cannot bigger, put bigger injectors. So that really limits them. So that car in reality can't really make more than 320 wheel, maybe a tiny bit more. Whereas a HR 350Z with just exhaust and tune can make like 300, 310 wheel. So it's huge diminishing returns like modifying these cars in Texas, because that is a Texas street legal car competing in the Pro-Am series. But it does look amazing. It does look really spicy. And they just drive that car with pure aggression. All right, here's James Carr, James Kerr's following AJ Patel. So aggressive on the entry from James. Really nice. He's matching the car. AJ's on a little bit of a narrow line. Amazing transition there again from James. He is a master at that. AJ was too narrow there on the inside there. His line is a bit off. That's throwing James off. It doesn't allow him to have as clean of a lap chasing because AJ keeps pinching off his line too far on the inside. I'm going to cough. I'm going to turn for one second. <coughs> Hopefully that wasn't picked up on the mic too much, but if it is, sorry guys. All right, James is leading. Let's see how fast that... Yeah, there's quite a bit of speed difference in that S54 car. AJ is going straight there. That's going to be a huge advantage of James. James has big angle too. I think he's on that SLR kit. That is such a good angle kit for the E46. I've bought like four of those kits before. They're good kits. Oh man, AJ's a mess there. I wonder if he was struggling with some mechanical problems with the car. Ooh, here I am versus Marty Rudy Martinez. This is for a one-two battle, I believe. Ooh. I I'm really surprised I wasn't more aggressive there on entry. I was kind of timid there. I should have been up on his door. I'm not sure what was going on. I reel him in there. I'm a good pace behind the entire time though. I did a really slow transition there too, but I'm up on his door. My car is just faster though, so I'm probably playing it safe. And then I'm gonna dive in on this pocket, I bet. Yeah, that's nice. Finish up on his door. That was a good solid lap, but my S14 really could have been more impressive. Big jump by Rudy there. Rudy's on my door, way more aggressive entry. I am on the outside, a great lap there. I do remember being inside the car and thinking if I don't take the most absolute outside line possible, because he bullied me there, I am gonna get my car wrecked. Rudy right there, he messed up. He had a late transition, now he's in complete catch up mode. I think, I, oh, then he's too far on the inside there. He pinched off his own line. Now I'm just gonna rock it off. That's a big difference there. Although he had a better entry, but then he kind of hung himself with that really aggressive entry. So, third place All right. first. Now we have an award ceremony. James Fantastic Kurz job. And I'm Adrian Stell both did really good runs. Winner goes to James Kurz. Third place. All right. Wait, Tim, hold on. <laughs> and uh, the battle between Rudy Martinez and uh, Aaron Losey is a, is a long story. Aaron tried to poison Rudy last night with some peach cobbler. Rudy's like, nope, that's not happening. I'm not taking that. Then today, Rudy's motor decided it was gonna eat some rocks or whatever and eat itself right out the, uh, you know, the whatever. You know how you know what I'm trying to say. So then, uh, Rudy, I was trying to let him borrow my M3. You guys know he didn't want it. It was a good decision for him to borrow Diego's car, though. 
Anyway, long story short, Valiant driving on, on Rudy Martinez. The winner today, however, is Aaron Low Seed. Alright. That is so weak. What is this? What kind of champagne is this? What is going on, guys? Oh, that's not champagne? Oh, that's apple cider? Oh, okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you all so much for being in the heat and watching a bunch of like friends trying to wreck into each other. It's great fun. Tell your friends. I'm going to have to hand out some checks. How are you doing? Hello, Rudy Martinez. How are you doing, man? I'm doing okay. See the end of the comp? Comp's done. Yep. How'd your car do, Rudy? Ah, uh, well, you know, uh, little cylinder left the chat, but we're okay. Yeah. Um, how'd the comp go? Comp went well. Diego was uh, gracious enough to lend me his car, mm -hmm. so I got to drive his 350Z. And you did very well in the 350Z. And how did it go? Uh, do I have to say it? Yeah. The, you said the best man was going to win. Uh, <laughs> what did you say? You said something like that. What were the exact I got words? second. He has to eat this. Eat I got these words. second place. I to do who? not like second place. To who? To Aaron. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Brutal. Uh, okay, so what happened? Rough. How'd it go? Uh, Replay it. it was, was good. Was that car good? It was a good battle, but at the end of the day, the I think I was good all the way up until the carousel where the 285s in the carousel were just like, you hooked and gone, and I was like, no! He just he like, has to make excuses, man. I was in it! He was in it. No, he did super well. He was so close to me on entry, I thought he was gonna crash into me because he left the line early, <laughs> and like I passed him, entered, and I could feel him, he was so close. I thought I was So I just kept you. going to the outside, I thought I was gonna go off, I'm like, yeah. I just had to keep going wider, and I was like, F, he's so close. And the car's so hilarious, you don't let off in the transition, you just stay in it and do oh, a little really? twitch. And, yeah. Uh, no, but it's funny, what I wanted to say is that 350Z, once you're on track past entry, it's every bit as fast as like the fastest yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This track is like a complete equalizer, it's so cool. Yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to troll him then because I won. But who's in points lead I'm for the totally. year? By how much? Uh, 31. Oh, uh, see, look at this, he's out to, oh God, that means it's almost impossible for me to yep. beat you, isn't it? Yep. You'd have to go out before. Yep. Uh, you'd have to, yep. I'd have to get first and you get less than third, right? Uh, yeah. Basically. All right, this is gonna work. <laughs> you know, I would sure. I would murder you if you were in Diego's car at MSR. So it's good that that happened here. Yep. Oh wait, we're no, going, I, di I did murder him. Never we're, mind. We're coming here back here though. Oh, that's right. It's not MSR. So I got the skills of cars. I'm gonna have to like invite some people. Like, hey, I need you to show up to knock out Rudy in top eight. <laughs> oh man. Free this entry. Gonna, this is gonna be so hard. Yep. I'm well, going I guess, to Japan. I guess round seven and eight will really be the deciders. <laughs> Could you I'm just imagine? Gonna, I'm going to keep adding rounds to the series this year until... Pop up, round seven. Don't I have a round seven on there that just says nope. TBEA? I hope not. I think I do, but I don't think we're doing it. I, I don't think so either. Yeah. All right, the next one's going to be the decider. Yeah. But fantastic. I wanted driving. to show you this Lexus IS 300. Did you see the hood? Oh, it's got a penis on it. Yeah. I need to go find Diego and Kevin and see what happened with their battles so I can finish up their storyline as oh, well. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't even, I'm, I'm glad he I He was don't. a judge for it. I'm glad I don't have to, well, I kind of checked out. With them? What? Don't you have to go discuss with them? Yeah, I almost believe they could do one more time if it's that. Because it is critical for a Japan trip, you know? It is, I know, it's difficult. So it's like, okay. But I'm not a judge, so I'm out. Like, at this point, it's like, I think they should just go one more time. But Would you beat me if you were in your car, by the way? Oh, of course. Yeah, okay. This car was on it this weekend until it said nah. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. There we go. All right, let's talk about the Lone Star Drift Texas Street Legal Competition class that we're about to start. These cars are limited to 265 tire, but also they're not made to be equalized with like rule book. They're made so the cars don't break. So the rule book I designed yeah, was specifically yeah. to keep the cars alive because we used to have to build every car and like engine swap and do everything else. And these cars are supposed to be stupid simple, stock injectors. You cannot add a different turbo to the car, change it or add one supercharger, nitrous, none of that stuff. If the car came with a turbo, you can run that turbo that came in that chassis, nothing else. It was naturally aspirated. The car just has to stay naturally aspirated with the stock injectors. 
Um, same with the turbo cars, they can't change injectors because typically the injectors are a big limiting factor. Um, there are some cheater cars that you could pick like a Z06 Corvette, but no one ever runs them. There, people do pick C6 Corvettes, but they don't win very much for some reason. The 350Zs just murder people mostly. We did have a Corolla win one or two years in a row, and we also had a S13 with Patrick Carson win the series and Nick Bierman did before with the, what do you call it? With the um, SR20. Anyway, so let's get to it. These guys are battling for a series overall championship win of the year. We have one more round to go. Whoever wins gets to go to Japan. Both my series, the series winners, go to Japan to go drive at Ebusu Circuit. They get a car from me, tires from me, hotel, airfare, all that stuff. They buy their own food, but they get a huge trip to go overseas. We've been doing it for probably eight years now. It's absolutely amazing. Let's talk about this comp. This is Stuart Wilson in the lead, followed by Fielding Shredder, who's driving a giveaway car that he's trying to give away. The follow car has a bunch of issues. It is not being able to shift, I think. So he's stuck in one gear and struggling, just complete struggle bus. He's gonna get eliminated by Stuart, looks like. Stuart is doing amazing in that Corvette. Beautiful car, super solid looking. Uh, it's so cool to see nice cars that are well cared for like that, that actually get cleaned and stuff. So this is Frank DeLeon versus Eric Barnett. Now, Frank is going to understeer off course here. Uh, I'm just watching. Mustang gets by him. Uh, that would have been a complete zero by how much understeer there was by the 350Z. So the Mustang does not even have to complete the course. That is the Mustang that uh, Lexi liked from Doriaro Channel. And it does look very unique and very American going around track. I do like it a lot. Very cool. And he finishes up the lap even though he didn't need to. Now, huge lead by that Mustang going down the straight. Oftentimes, oh, and 350Z goes off track and probably bends something. The Mustang is uh, doing a great job. Not much to say here. He's just hustling it through the track. It's got style. Looks American. I love it. I used to host a Mustang battle back in the day when I used to have a must like a Mustang out at Mineral Wells. I think we did it three years in a row, and then we eventually opened it up to Camaros and anything American. It was a lot of fun. Uh, back in the day, no one drove Mustangs, and then they got pretty popular about 10 years ago. Here's Leo Ramirez versus Stuart Wilson again. Leo's in the G35 up front. It's a really cool looking G35, has an aftermarket paint job, nice wheel fitment. These cars are a little bit slow, they're very heavy. They That car would have come with the DQ35DE, which makes about 290 horsepower from the factory. I think it's exactly 287, I'm not sure. Uh, they don't pick up power easily and they are heavy cars. So you kind of struggle with them, but they're, they used to be like $2,000 for a running manual transmission one. So that's what that is. Corvette just takes him down the straight. Nice entry by the Corvette. A lot of straight line there by the G35. He's having a tough time catching up. You'll see him, he'll have to make a bunch of decisions. Like he's gonna cut the line a bunch there, then he can't really extend his drifting because his car doesn't want to drift at a different speed. Corvette looks like he's just going to walk with this now. The G35 is just playing catch up. Great job by the Corvette. Those are such good drift cars. Meow. All right, now we have Ryan versus Harrison Johnson. Now, the, the 370Z is a fantastic chassis. They have terrible visibility out anything past, like, your shoulders. You can't see out the back of those things or out the windows very well. You can only see out the front windshield. And Harrison Johnson is a series winner for multiple, probably, seasons. He has a ton of wins under his belt. Amazing driver. He's in a Mustang that he actually bought from me. <coughs> He's just cruising through there. Good old consistent Harrison. Fantastic driver. Little fun fact, he used to drift with us when he turned 14. He drifted a V8 Ford-engined Volvo or, uh, sedan. Harrison just always so consistent. Uh, this is the first time I've really seen him drive this car as well. Fun to see him in a new car. He bought this pre-COVID and got a really good deal on it and kept it clean and didn't do anything with it forever. It's fun to see him out. He used to be an RX-7 driver with a LS1 swapped in. <coughs> so.
Sorry about my cough. Now we have Juan versus Leo. Two G35s. Interesting choice. Again, these in Texas, if you're not a local, used to be crazy cheap. They probably still are really cheap. But I mean, you literally could buy these things for just a couple grand. I have drivers that were getting them for hundreds of dollars and that was it. Obviously, to modify a drift car and operate, it's way more. But it's always fun for us to like find cars for so cheap and do stuff. It makes us feel special inside. Drifters will spend a thousand dollars on his like tires for a weekend, but they don't want to spend a thousand dollars when they buy a car. It's hilarious. These guys could almost be teammates if they'd match their liveries. Great lap there. All right, let's get to the next battle. All right, we have Leo and Stuart. This must be a one more time. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I was not a judge and I'm just watching this and commenting so there's some talking going on. Leo's putting down a really nice lap now. Stewart's being uh, not super aggressive. Dips a tire there. You don't really want to dip a tire there. You could bend something, you gotta be careful. Plus it's a little bit offline. I think Stewart's just a little bit conservative with that really nice wrap on the car. The car looks fantastic. Oh gosh, that car is so much faster. This kind of looks like a repay, replay of last time. There must have been something I missed. I'm trying to get through this video so it doesn't take me five days to edit, but I wish I went back and saw exactly what was going on that caused that one more time. Hopefully I didn't just put two videos in or something. I don't think I did. The professionalism of the Lone Star Drift channel. I have to learn from all those Twitch streamers. I've never seen one though. All right, here, Daniel Mar Martin in the lead in a 350Z, followed by Connor Murphy. Connor is outside of Austin, Texas. He has an SR20 swapped in that car. It is a fantastic little drift car, and Connor's a really, really good driver. Solid guy, been around a long time, owns his own fabrication business. Hit him up if you need some stuff done. He does general mechanic work as well, I believe, but he does really nice fabrication. I should mention all these guys' side businesses more. Kevin Susie from Turn 5 also does a lot of that stuff. Big advantage, I think, to Connor Murphy on these laps. Plus, that car looks so cool. He used to be an E30 driver, which is really interesting. I think he had like a 325i which was a car that was so slow it barely drifted. All right, now we have Adam Lee in a 350Z, followed by James Kurz again. James Kurz is farther behind than he's been against anybody, I feel like. He's normally so aggressive. Big mistake by Adam Lee. I think James is just falling behind, not wanting to get wrecked. Must be a mechanical difficulty by Adam, because I've seen him drive really well in the past. James, James knew something was up, though. He was being really careful, it looked like. Oftentimes the drivers will be like, yo, I want to do my lap, but also don't hit me because I have no power steering and I might fly off track. So you'll see the follow driver who's sometimes really aggressive, most of the time really aggressive, fall way back. All right, let's see how much faster this S54 is than a 350Z. A little bit faster, but not as fast as you would think. Nice entry. James is always really aggressive. Adam's still having problems with his car. James a little bit more inside than I bet see him right there. Almost dips a tire in the grass. Outside there, great line, looking good. Man, those BMWs are such good little drift cars, especially with decent power. Nice lap. It's so cool, by the way. James Kurz has been driving with us for a long time. He's been beating on that car. It was originally a really cheap car, so he didn't have a lot of money in it, so he really beat on it. These drift cars last so much longer than you would think. Uh, if you have a car such as the 350Z in the lead, or even Michael's in the follow, these cars last years and years and years and years. Some of them have been in drifting, like my S13, for 20 years. 20 years and it's still going. The car and the parts oftentimes are not the expensive part. It's all the going and having fun and living adventures and doing all the stuff in the cars. 
a lot of people think that they're immediately going to destroy the car drifting it, whereas some of these cars will live way longer lives than if they were just daily drivers getting a billion miles on them and then eventually thrown away because the maintenance costs more than the car did in their brain. Nice entry there from David Moon. He's having problems keeping the car in drift because, again, his car doesn't have a lot of power and doesn't want to drift at the speed of the car in front of him. But he was having some nice laps before then. Oh my god, that was close. That was so close. David Moon's an FDRX7 driver, which is cool, by the way. He was the one with the blue one on the trailer in this video. I won't make a trailer joke about RX7, so don't worry about it. And this is Jordan in her 350Z. It's a female driver in the front. Stuart's staying way away from her. She's having a lot of problems keeping the car in drift. I don't know if she's having some difficulties with the car, but the car does look really nice and clean. Fun to see girl drivers out there. I don't know why there's not more girl drivers. Cars are kind of like a male-dominated sport. All right, let's see the power difference between these two cars. Nice entry by Stuart. He looks a lot more solid in the lead there. Jordan is having some understeer problems from her car. I'm not sure if she's having some mechanical difficulties or what's going on. And there we go. It's got to be intimidating to be out there with Corvettes as well. Because they pull you down the straight. You get into a problem where you're trying to play catch up. And then again, you're not on your pace. You're on their pace. Which just causes more mistakes. Alright, this is Oscar versus Harrison. Harrison's being really aggressive, wow. That's something you do not see a lot of either is the Genesis cars. Ooh, really aggressive by Harrison. Genesis goes off track. Immediate zero to 100 advantage basically to Harrison. See what happens this next lap. Harrison has a very timid entry. Very clean lap here though. Not huge angle. Nice transition through there. Harrison's car is not very fast, but it's expertly piloted and very smooth. Good lap by both drivers. Let's see here. Harrison's definitely going to take this though. Harrison is a master. Such a good driver. All right, Leo versus Cody. Leo's in that G35 that was going against the Cabo car earlier. Understeer. Normally he has huge angle. Big understeer there. Follow cars having some troubles keeping up. I'm losing my voice. I don't know how these announcers do this for days and days. I'm trying to announce for like 20 minutes on here, 30 minutes doing this video. And I am a mess. I do have a drink though. I'm going to say big advantage to that G35 even though he just put a tire off track. Let's see about this entry. Nice entry, not a big flick or anything. Little bit of counter, like uh, fixing his uh, steering there. Nice lead lap, actually, though. He's looking really solid. I like it. And the little tank of that is a 350Z. It's so nice, by the way, the way Texas Street Legal Bracketing System is set up. Now, I'm not like, uh, whatchamacallit patting myself on the back. I stole that. I borrowed it from Chris Jager down from Australia who did pass away during COVID years. Um, he created a really nice system for doing bracketing and making it so that the drivers get more seat time and we don't have to do qualifying. It makes the events more fun for the spectators, gets all the drivers more seat time. Qualifying is very boring, so it's really nice to do all that. Here's something you don't see very much, by the way is two Mustangs of the SN95 flavor. Putting it down, looking really cool. I love this. You would think that American Drifting would have more of this, but they don't. Ooh, Todd's on a way better line in the back, which is interesting. The lead Mustang was on a very shallow line, almost mowing the grass on the inside. Todd, nice transition timing from Todd there. Really nice. He's a little bit late on that one, but that was okay. Gets up on his door. Let's see if he can continue right there. Todd slowed up a little bit, so he's off pace there. Transitions nicely. Has a little bit of bobble there. Nice job. They both go off at the end. All right, here's Edwin Jennings versus Kevin. Susie, Kevin is in a borrowed car in that 350Z. 
Edwin is in the Mustang. Full lock understeer. Edwin, oh no. Edwin goes off, but he's safe. Matters more that you don't get hit when you mess up like that. Hmm. Looks like Edwin's having more technical difficulties. Edwin is also someone that has a huge amount of Assetto Corsa time in a simulator. And Kevin just, he doesn't care about that car, it's not his. That car is owned by Irving Ramirez from KBD Body Kits. Uh, he was cooking some $400 a pound wag Wagyu? Wagyu? Steaks for all the KBD Body Kit guys. I had some, it was amazing. Here's Connor Murphy versus Tyler Sheffield. Tyler is in a 335 BMW. That's a turbo BMW. They make pretty good power. They could be unreliable engines, but they do have, you know, BMWs are great cars and line sixes are amazing. Um, that's a really interesting car. I thought it would be like an American JZX or a German JZX where they get really popular, but they did not get that popular in American drifting for some reason. Even though they make crazy power for what they are with simple bolt-on stock turbos, and I think 85 too, and they make like 400 or 450 wheel, which is a ton. Connor though, that little three, S13 with an SR is a weapon. Looks good, drives good, he's a great driver. Mm, such a good Texas Street Legal car. And if you have the ability to keep an SR like on a stock ECU, keep a stock turbo on it, stock injectors, and you let Nissan figure out all the engineering on those cars, they're actually pretty darn reliable. It's when you start modifying them a lot. You start throwing rocker arms and having problems. So I love SRs, but they're getting difficult because they're so old. All right, here is Alex versus James Kurz. Alex is looking great in that 350Z. Is He's a sim driver, really good. James though, he's a, he's a monster. Although James is really far back right now. Um, some of these cars do compete, by the way. You've seen James a lot in this video. It's because these guys compete in both the Texas Street Legal Series and Pro-Am at this specific venue. So it's, we don't let them do that at the fast tracks like MSR and stuff, but this is a much slower track, so we do let them do that. Ooh, nice entry again. I do like that big flick entry. Looks good. And James takes it all the way to the edge of the track, almost dips a tire. Alex is on him there, though. Alex has such good clean laps. Good transition timing there. Alex has a bit of a bobble, though. James puts down a beautiful lead lap. Big angle, so consistent. Let's that follow driver tuck up on him. Alex, though, is going to bleed out a little bit of speed and have a little bit of trouble here. Let's see what happens. No, Alex kills it in this last section. I didn't think he was going to pull that off so well. Great lap by both those guys. All right, Edwin and Kevin, one more time. Oh, Kevin messes up there. I don't know what was happening with the previous laps. If you do wanna know what happens, you can judge these laps yourself by rewinding and going seeing what happened in their previous laps. Um, it was a one more time. I'm not quite sure what the judges were doing because I was not judging this. I'm just announcing. It's really nice, by the way, not judging or being responsible for that. The judges have a very tough job. Not only is it tough judging in general, you're watching two cars doing separate things. You're also doing it in the extreme heat after you've been driving all weekend because these guys are our good drivers that are judging. Um, it can be difficult to concentrate for, you know, an hour straight, especially in the heat, especially when you've been inside your own race car. Some of our cars, like my S14, have to be 150 degrees inside. And then we go judge, and it's so tough. But we thank the judges. They do such a good job. It can be a very thankless job. People can get really mad. All right, Kobe's leading. David Moon is following. Both of these cars are 350Zs. I believe the front one is an HR car, so it does make more power. David Moon's is a little bit slower. One thing about those forward or the front HR cars, they can remain in second gear throughout this entire track if they're tuned because they can rev to 8,000 RPM, whereas the DEs, I think they rev to like seven or something like that. Um, not quite sure what they do tuned, but they would have to enter into third and then shift down to second throughout the track. And they just don't have the RPM that the HR ones do to extend the track in second gear and everything else and just put down more torque the entire time. The HR cars are way, way, easier to drive at this track oh good looking lap though guys 
I'm gonna be quiet for a second. Now this lap, you'll notice that the cars are a bit farther apart. They're not quite so on each other's doors. Their transition timing's a little bit late because of that, but it is really nice to see these guys put down nice laps, get more experience, do a great job, be safe, be comfortable, and everything else. You'll notice you're not really seeing a lot of crashes in this comp or anything like that. These cars are not getting beat up. Five, ten years ago in Lone Star Drift, we were kind of known as a crash series and stuff because we had a lot of barriers on track. The cars were crazy cheap. We just ran them into each other. You'll notice sometimes, you know, many years ago in this channel, I would just like door cars constantly. I would just, we were making tire marks on each other's cars because we saw it in Japanese videos a lot. We thought it was the coolest thing ever. And now that an S13 door is like $500, you're not willing to do that anymore. So we're driving these cars much more like they're a bit more collectible. Um, some of the 350Z guys don't because the 350Zs and especially the G35s are really cheap. But you'll notice the Corvette guys and S chassis guys and stuff, they're taking it relatively easy on these cars. They do not want to damage them. It's nice though because we're just not fixing the cars as much as we used to, maintaining them and everything else. Even just running into people's doors like that, you go through a tie rod every event or something like that. It's nice not going through tie rods. All right, this is Tannis first Harrison Johnson. Another Genesis. It's kind of crazy. I didn't even realize we had so many. Now, Tannis was on way too of an inside line. He should have been farther to the outside of that sweeper. He was on the inside. Now he just pinched off Harrison there. When I say pinched off, I mean he's too far to the inside. Harrison had to then go even farther inside or remain farther back behind them to maintain a more outside judgeable line. Nice laps, guys. Let's see what Harrison does. Oh, it is 2 a.m. while I'm editing this, too, so if I yawn, I apologize. Harrison's on a nice outside line, so consistent, you don't see any steering correction of his front wheels bobbling. Um, oh, no! I didn't see this happen before. This is the first time I saw that. That was a mint condition Mustang. I am so sorry, Harrison. I knew it got bumped at the event, but I didn't know why. Oh, man. It's going to look like Max's Mustang soon if he's not careful. All right, Max versus Cody. By the way, the time of these competitions is swapped. Texas Street Legal was on Saturday and Pro-Am was on Sunday. But because of the length of Texas Street Legal, I tossed it at the end of this video because I wanted more people to get as far through the video as possible. And this competition being longer, you'll notice that Max's car did break in Pro-Am, but this is prior to that. So a little bit of Back to the Future stuff. Oh, you'll notice there, Max did a handbrake entry, which slowed him down. He should have clutch kicked there because he was not as close as he could have been on entry. Either that or he's playing it safe. But he should have done an accelerating technique on entry instead of that handbrake. A um, little goof there, but it's okay because he still caught him. He's up on him now, too. Max is just the happiest guy at all the events. So happy. Time of his life every day. He loves drifting so much. Great guy to watch. All right, here's Todd versus Brian. Brian is in that 350Z. I love that 350Z. It's just like Kevin wins. Oh, he goes off and Todd Neal passes him. All right, we're going to just cut that short. Todd is now leaving. Brian is really close to him there. Very aggressive. Todd has a really nice lap. Big advantage of Todd so far. Oh, big understeer there for a second from Todd. Going to be interesting to see what the judges do. If they zero out both of those laps or if they just let that be a big deduction and let Todd move through. Find out more in this video soon. All right, Harvey Gore in his 370Z versus Edwin Jennings in his Mustang. Ooh, Harvey's on the completely wrong line. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. That 370Z is such a good little drift car, and he beats it up. Nice transitions. Edwin's trying to chase. Uh, when I say he's trying to chase, he's like uh, always a beat behind in this video. He's a beat behind there. He should have transitioned. You know, a good beat first. Ooh, Edwin's car's nice and fast, though. 
Edwin's been having some mechanical difficulties though. Hopefully everything's good. Oh, big strain there. Oh! Looks like Edwin either sh missed his shift or something broke in the car at limp mode. Luckily, Harvey caught the car right before he hit it, but that would have been an absolute repeat of another red Mustang getting hit in that same quarter panel. We've had almost no carnage this event. Oh, Connor's a mess there. What's going on? Connor puts his hand out the window because he has some type of frustration there. Great lap, though. I shouldn't say great lap. It was a good lap. All right, let's see here. Oh, man, Ray in the follow position was pretty close on entry. And then for some reason, he fell behind right there. Connor's on a great line. Nice transition. Everything's good. Ray cuts the line. There. Oh, no. We're getting aggressive here. People are starting to get their cars hurt. Uh, looks like Connor's car is basically unscathed, but it did pull off his bumper. I do know that I think that's been the same bumper for many years. He's just... Oh, he tosses it. Hopefully someone's going to go pick that up before he gets hurt. And I feel bad for that little S13 that's been doing so well. Oh, man, we see James back in here again in the heat of things. James way behind, though. Also too far on the inside of that track. Not a great follow line for him right there. He's good at reeling the other car in, though. Good job, James. He's catching up. Looking good. Good job. All right, let's see what Diego does. Nice lap so far by Diego. Nice entry. He could have been closer. Could have been a little bit more aggressive. Nice flick right there in his transition. That was beautiful. Oh, that's crazy close. That would almost take off his bumper if he had one on there. These guys, oh, that was perfect timing again. So good. And again. That's what it's supposed to look like. That was fantastic. Good job. Can you get Mark for me? All right, here comes Kevin Wynn and Kobe. Kevin is a beast of a driver. Believe he's leading the point series this year. A little bit too far in, though. That was a little bit of a mess. Nice lap. Both these cars are very similar looking builds. I like it. It's funny. Kevin's car used to be so clean. He's just letting it get beat up. I assume what he's going to do is he's going to clean up at the end. Hey, look. There's Mark. Do, 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 do. All right. Back to it. See Kevin. So aggressive. Thank God he has colored wheels here. It'd be really hard to tell who he is. I love those 57Ds as well. I've been on RPF once forever, but I really like those wheels. They're playful. They're colorful. I'm not sure if you can leave them outside, like stored on your car without them fading, but they look rad. All right, here is Ray versus Connor. I'm going to be quiet. Oh, what are you doing, Connor? I thought I was going to be quiet. Oh, man, Connor. I wonder what's up with that corner. People are getting... They're sucking up on the people, and then they're getting... Either the lead car is slowing down a bit. You could go back and look at that. Oh, man, that was that was sketchy. Um, you can go back and look at that and see it, whose fault it was. Very curious in the comments. Who's at fault and what you would do for the judging there. Because if it's a lead car's fault, you know, it's a big deduction. But if the follow car just like runs up on him and hits him, it's a follow car thing. If it was your insurance company, they'd always say the follow car's at fault. And oftentimes you'll find in stuff like this, the follow car should really be in control of this car. And I know you should be close, but it is a grassroots event and they shouldn't be hitting anybody. So you'll see us like, ah, I hit him follow guy's fault if you watch formula d and the follow guy hits and it's the lead guy's fault um, 
So there's different levels of aggression in this stuff and kind of have to take it all into consideration. You can hear the tiredness in my voice. It's almost time for me to go to bed. I am almost done narrating this. Ooh, they are on the edge of the track. I'm going to be quiet and just let this roll.
I want to reiterate it again. These guys are heroes in these cars. They are throwing it all out there. These cars have battle scars, little tire marks up the doors. And they just, oh my god, that was so aggressive. He tags him in the door and put, puts another tire mark. I didn't plan that out. I was just talking about that. But they are so aggressive. They love it. I absolutely love it. That was such a cool lap. So cool how aggressive these guys are. So talented so experienced there's so much going on these guys are keeping their cars running they're transporting them they're making friends they're driving aggressive look at that with harvey sucks up on him and slows down a little bit this is amazing i love it how cool is this my blood gets pumping so much driving these cars too We're getting safe now. I thought it was going to get dangerous, but now it's getting safer. Safer. Oh, and this is going to be the one-two battle. We have Kevin versus Diego. Oh, beautiful. About three feet there between them. Nice transition, but nothing crazy aggressive that I might see in there. Here we go. That was aggressive. Oh, and he hit him. This was a contested thing, and it was a bit of a mess, and they, the judges gave it back and forth. They couldn't see from this angle that it was Diego's fault, but we had another camera angle that was brought in after the, the judging was done, and it was Diego's fault. You could ask if you know Kevin slowed down too much or what, but you know you should be able to slow down a lot. Right there on track is really dirty, and oftentimes the cars slow down. You have to get off the gas, let the car grip up a little bit as you hit that dusty spot. Do your thing. Man, beautiful. These guys are amazing. So it's going to be really close at the end of the season to see who wins. But these guys are putting it down. Really close close points battle for both Pro-Am and Texas Street Legal. Thank you so much. Hello, audience. We have a car here. He was an SR20 man, but what happened? I blew up way too many of them. It was getting very expensive to drive. It was one motor in a vent. Really? Or almost, almost a full event, not even a full event. So how long did you do that for? Four years. How many SRs did you go through? At least eight. You're so bad at this. Some that are stock motors, some that were fully built motors did not matter. Why did you not give up earlier? Like, was, did you love the engine? I was so far, I wanted to drive street legal. Oh. And the car is solid, the chassis was solid, and I was like, man, if this thing would just hold together for street legal, and then I could do Texas uh, Pro-Am with it, and I, you know, a ton of track time all weekend without having two different cars, mm -hmm. and uh, without changing ch uh, chassis too. And how is this? So, first of all, I swapped to a, tell us. Uh, 1JZ VVTi Garrett 3076, that's about as old as I am. Let's go look at the car. Is it fast? It's pretty quick. It's reliable. It's more reliable than it is fast. What's the difference between driving an SR car? Because like, I was driving with him yesterday. It was crazy slow because it was misfiring. It wasn't running right. Did you drive it today with it running right? Yes. And it's faster than faster, yesterday? Faster. Way faster. All right. Tell me the difference between rolling a SR20 S14 versus a 1J. A uh, little bit laggier. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to rev out. Just so you have more cylinders trying to rev up, I think. It's a heavier motor. You can definitely feel the Wait, weight. You said this is laggier? So you have more cylinders trying to rev up, I think. Just so you have more cylinders trying to rev up, I think. All right, Rudy, real quick, since I screwed up this last clip. Uh, okay. What is it like to operate this car for people that have never operated a car like this? It's a 550 wheel, Jay-Z, dog box, rear mount radiator. Like how many laps do you get out of a set of tires? How long does it take to overheat? How hard is it to cool down? Mm. Uh, how hard is it to drive? Like all these things. Oh, wow. So 
To get it prepped, uh, it takes a lot more than like a regular car. I take out the injectors, I clean them every event, uh, change the oil, and uh, change, clean out the fuel filter. So we're already talking about a couple hours of work. We do a full nut and bolt check, and then uh, I don't really align it that much, so like kind of whatever happens, happens. I know that's kind of weird. For, Since you own an alignment <laughs> yeah, shop, yeah, yeah. Keep going. But like you can feel it, it's like, yeah, it's still good to drive through. So it takes a lot of prep to do the before. Uh, have to bring like a full toolbox full of tools. Instead, like the Red G35, I just hop in it and drive it. And I never really work on the Red G35. So this almost takes like a full crew of people to operate. You know, changing the tires, you probably only get like five laps, six laps. Uh, if you're like really in it, like you could kill a pair of tires in two laps. So it just depends on how hard you're driving. And yeah. Is it that much better than your red car for all this extra effort? And also, why do you have to clean your injectors every event? Uh, I think it's just like making sure everything's like working. Did you have a lot of problem with them in the past or something? Uh, last year I had the foam fall apart, and which is my fault. And it got into all the injectors, so I just wanna, before every event, I just wanna like okay, make sure. Sense. Did you blow a motor because of that? Oh uh, yeah, I did. Okay. So just preventative because you had like yeah, yeah, yeah. mental scarring from it. That makes sense. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, do you do you think going this far in this direction is good, or could you have just kept this as like a little bit more basic car and done everything the same? Like, you know, when you're driving. Oh, uh, at the end of the day, it pretty much comes down to, like, your driving capabilities. doesn't matter if it's, like, 350 wheel or, like, 600. Like, there's enough gap there, like, you can make up for it. Yeah. Uh, I think the car is just getting really old. Mm -hmm. Where this car, I've been drifting it for 11 years, so it's kind of like one Band-Aid over the next. Mm -hmm. So. And Still one of the best cars here, though. Yeah, but it, it requires more attention than if, like, you were to build something new, so. And again, thank you to all the sponsors, the people that come to the events, the drivers, the spectators, the helpers, everybody. We can't do it without everybody. This is a family and I love you all. But especially thank you to BC Racing Custom Quailovers for supporting Lone Star Drift for so long. NK Wheels, I've been working with them. I mean, like driving on their RPF1 since way before I worked with them, but thank you so much. Thank you to Gabe KBD Body Kits for making indestructible parts and coming to our events and being a part of that. Heatwave Visual. Uh, thank you so much to Heatwave for providing so much help for Drift Week and everything in this last year. Spec Clutches and Flywheels, they've been with me for a decade as well. Vaptasia and Just Racing, our buddy over there. Thank you so much to Vaptasia. Bellino Tires, they come to the events, they support the events, they support the drivers, they do contingency. Thank you so much, they help out with Drift Week. And thank you to WhatMonstersDo.com. We've been working with them for a really long time. Go to their website, use the discount code EBISU for a percentage off. That's their old logo on top, their new logo just below it. Thank you so much, WhatMonstersDo.com. Can't do it without you. Couldn't do the Japanese content for sure. Thank you so much. Bye.